Do you know how many bugs crawl into your mouth when you're sleeping? Well, I don't personally know, but it could be a lot and that sounds disgusting. Don't worry guys, I'm here to save the day. I got a simple solution. Sorry. But simple solution, just tape your mouth shut. You never have to worry about eating bugs again. Okay, okay, just kidding. That's not exactly what I'm here to talk to you about. Oh, thank God. I thought you were talking to us about taping your mouth shut when you were sleeping. That was gonna be really weird. Well, actually, yes, I'm here to talk to you about taping your mouth shut when you're sleeping. I'm not here to talk about eating bugs. And really, I think this is a bigger issue than just eating bugs when you're sleeping. The issue is when you're breathing through your mouth. We should all be breathing through our nose. And do I think this is a big deal? Yes, because if you breathe through your nose, it can change your life. So first of all, how do we even know if I'm a mouth breather or a nose breather? Well, I actually made a video on that and basically it goes over some signs that you're a mouth breather and I'm putting a link to that video in the description below. But the problem here is that when we breathe through our mouth, our body does not get the oxygen that it needs. So yes, you're gonna get enough oxygen to survive, but really that's not enough. For me personally, I don't wanna just survive. I wanna have peak performance. Now I know what you're thinking. You probably think that I'm crazy for telling you to tape your mouth shut before you go to sleep. Like what is everyone else gonna think when they see me taping my mouth? Well, I'm here to tell you that once you see the reasons behind it, you're gonna wanna do it too. So like I said before, when we breathe through our mouth, our body does not get enough oxygen. And the reason is when we're breathing through our mouth, the oxygen comes into our body really quickly, but it also comes out really quickly. Now you may think that that's a lot of oxygen because we keep getting new oxygen really, really quickly, but that's actually not how our body absorbs oxygen. Our body absorbs oxygen best when we're breathing really, really slowly. So when we're breathing through our nose, we take a lot fewer but longer breaths. And these fewer but longer breaths are how our body gets enough time to absorb the oxygen. Because just because that oxygen comes into our lungs, it doesn't mean it spreads to the rest of our body. It really takes a lot of time for the oxygen to come into our lungs and then spread to the rest of our body. So that's why breathing through our nose is so much better. So what can happen when you don't get all that oxygen? Well, one is you can be way more tired. Like, you know when you sleep for eight to 10 hours and you still feel tired or you still feel like crap? Well, it could be that you're a mouth breather. When you breathe through your mouth, you're way less likely to get a full sleep cycle and you're way less likely to go into deep sleep. And when your body doesn't get a full sleep cycle, then your body's not recovering as well as it could. When we're sleeping, there's really four sleep stages. And the first three sleep stages are non-REM sleep, and our fourth sleep stage is called REM sleep. REM sleep is called rapid eye movement, meaning that's when our eyes are moving back and forth, and that's when we're gonna be dreaming. Now, if we're a mouth breather, then we're more likely to not get this deep sleep and not get a full sleep cycle. So you might be sleeping for a long period of time, but it's really not quality sleep. Every single one of these sleep stages is very important and every single one has a different function. So if you're not getting every single one the amount that you need, then some part of your brain is gonna be lacking. Also, people who are mouth breathers are really showing the same symptoms as people who have ADHD. So what are the symptoms of ADHD in children? Well, in school, they're gonna be a lot more irritable, they're gonna be a lot more tired, and their brains are really not gonna be developing as well. And if you're a parent, well, you could be thinking like, hey, my kid is sleeping like 10 hours a night. There's no way he's tired. He's getting enough sleep. Well, again, quality is important. Just because you sleep a lot, if the quality isn't good, that sleep is not gonna be good enough. So there's actually a sleep apnea clinic for children. And there's a doctor there by the name of Stephen Sheldon. And this doctor actually believes that ADHD does not exist. So he says that there's really no such thing as ADHD. And you might be wondering like, hey, what about these symptoms that people have ADD? Well, he says that these symptoms are basically the body's way of staying awake. So he actually goes on and there are some interesting points. He actually thinks that the pharmaceutical industry is the one that made up this fake disease and they work together with some psychiatrists and basically their goal is just to make a lot of money by prescribing people pills. And when you think about it, there really is a possibility behind this. Like people should not be having to take pills just to focus and be attentive in school. There has to be a reason behind this and you can't just answer everything by taking pills. Now I'm not saying who's right or who's wrong. I definitely need to do more research on this but I do see his point. But regardless, that does not deny the fact that mouth breathing is terrible for you. And just moving on, if you're a mouth breather, you're way more likely to have disturbances when you're sleeping. So like I said, it's really important to get that full sleep cycle, right? And if you're woken up in the middle of that sleep cycle, that's really bad because you're not gonna get all the benefits 
from that whole sleep cycle. And one other issue from mouth breathing is that you are way more likely to snore. So really human beings were meant to be silent breathers. We're supposed to breathe through our nose and it's supposed to be silent. So if we're making a noise when we're sleeping, that's a bad sign. And what's happening is when you're a mouth breather, your tongue is resting in the back of your mouth and it's going in the back of your throat. And when you're sleeping and your tongue is back here, it's basically blocking that airway. So now you have air coming in through your mouth, but part of that airway is blocked, so not as much oxygen is getting to your lungs. That's actually one of the reasons why that if you snore, that a lot of people recommend that you get a sleep study. Because the issue is now that that tongue is resting in the back of your throat, if that tongue goes back too far, it can completely cut off your breathing. And this is what's called sleep apnea when your body basically stops breathing in the middle of the night. And at this point, your body basically thinks that you're dead because there's no oxygen coming in. So now you're waking up and now you're going back to sleep. So you're never getting that full sleep cycle and your body's barely recovering. So instead, when we breathe through our nose, our tongue is naturally resting against the roof of our mouth and it's not blocking off our airway. And another benefit we get from breathing through our nose is nitric oxide. So every time we inhale through our nose, our body produces nitric oxide, which is this antibacterial and this vasodilator. And the benefit from this is that you're way less likely to get sick, you're way less likely to get sinus infections, and you're way less likely to get allergies. So if you always have sinus issues or you always have issues breathing through your nose, well, that could be a sign that you're not breathing through your nose enough. Another benefit of breathing through your nose is you are way more likely to be relaxed versus breathing through your mouth. Now think about people who do yoga or people who do meditation. What do these people have in common? Well, their breathing is really slow and really controlled and they really breathe through their nose. Now you might be thinking I'm talking about some weird hippie stuff here, but really I want you to pay attention to this. A big emphasis on yoga and meditation is just relaxing and keeping your body relaxed and controlling your breath. And you will never find them telling you to breathe through your mouth. And the reason is that they know. They know that breathing through your nose makes you more relaxed. And really this has been known for a while that even in ancient times, people were telling you to breathe through your nose. So why exactly does breathing through your nose make you more relaxed? Well, if you remember from psychology class or biology class, breathing through your nose will stimulate a more parasympathetic response in your body. And if you don't remember from biology class, parasympathetic response is basically your body's rest and relax response. So when you're breathing through your nose, you're getting this parasympathetic response and your body's already getting way more relaxed. Now compare that to when you breathe through your mouth. When you breathe through your mouth, you're really only using your lungs top half. You're not using your whole lungs capacity. And when this happens, you're getting a more sympathetic response in your body. And again, from biology class, your sympathetic response is your body's fight or flight response. So the problem with this is a lot of times we don't need to be in this fight or flight response. And we should really be in a rest and relaxed response. And if we're always in this active mode or this fight or flight mode, then our body's gonna respond in a way where we're way more anxious and we're way more stressed out. So you might be wondering like, hey, what if I know a kid that's a mouth breather? Like, it's kind of weird to tape their mouth shut, right? Like, they should probably just wait till they're older. Well, actually no, if a kid is a mouth breather, that's actually really bad too. And I would even argue that it's even more important when you're a kid. Because when you're a kid, your whole body is still developing. And one hormone that's released when you're sleeping is human growth hormone. So you probably already guessed what this hormone does. It's really important for our body's ability to grow. And this hormone is really only released during deep sleep. So if you know a kid that is not getting good sleep, that they're always snoring, or they're always breathing through their mouth, then they're not gonna be growing as much as they could. Now you see the importance here, right? Because after they get a certain age, then their body's already gonna stop growing. So you really wanna tackle that early on, as early as possible, to maximize how much they can actually grow. The last reason you should be taping your mouth shut at night is if you're a mouth breather, you are gonna have a dry mouth. Now this is a real problem when we're sleeping because first of all, when we wake up, our breath is gonna smell terrible. And the reason is when we are breathing through our mouth, we're drying up all the saliva that's in our mouth. And our saliva is really cool because it gives a lot of cool benefits to our mouth. And one of them being it can prevent us from getting cavities, it can prevent us from getting gum disease, 
and it can just strengthen our teeth and our gums. So when we breathe through our mouth, not only is our breath gonna smell terrible, we're also more likely to get cavities and gum disease. So do I think everyone should be taping their mouth shut at night? Well, no, because a lot of us actually already do breathe through our nose, but most of us are mouth breathers. And for those people who are mouth breathers, I think it can really benefit them. And if you are gonna go through with this and you do wanna tape your mouth shut at night, do not choose something that's really strong. Like, do not use duct tape on your mouth. That is way too strong, and it's also gonna hurt a lot taking off. If you wanna tape your mouth shut and get all these benefits of nose breathing, you can probably find some medical grade tape online, or if you're doing it at home, just make sure it's a really, really light tape. And if this tape comes off in the middle of the night, that's another sign that you're a mouth breather. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video, and if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below, and I'll see you in the next video.